Hello, it's great to be back here on VTV News, live at 3 p.m. from Hanoi, Vietnam. I'm Dai Chang with the latest updates for the hour. Parties to the UNCLOS discuss maritime issues, including marine environments and preservation in the sea. In celebration of the World Blood Donors Day, let's meet with some rare blood donors to understand their dedication to saving lives. And Vietnamese Canadian bubble artist Fan Yang captivates Vietnamese audiences through a spectacle of bubble art featuring laser lights and music effects. The top news for this hour, the importance of sustainable maritime development was confirmed at the 25th meeting of the state's parties to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, or UNCLOS. The event gathered together 134 out of 167 members countries of the convention and lasted from June the 8th through the 12th in New York City, U.S. Speaking at the conference, Nguyen Phu Nga, head of Vietnam's permanent representative delegation at the UN, reaffirmed the significance of the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, or UNCLOS, in establishing legal framework for maritime deployment activities. Nga also noted the growing concerns about recent complicated situations in the East Sea. Those include large-scale ocean filling, pulverizing coral reefs, and affecting marine ecosystems, which may increase tensions in the region. The event was held on the sidelines of the week-long 25th meeting of states' parties to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea at the UN headquarters. Later on the same day, National Assembly deputies discussed the draft law on information safety at the ongoing National Assembly session. The deputies agreed that an increasing number of information leaks has caused negative impacts on the operation of state agencies and stirred public concern. The law on information safety is essential to create a legal framework for this issue and enhance the role and responsibility of state management agencies. Some deputies said regulations on protecting personal information online should be fundamental content, but they are still limited in the draft law. There is no clear distinction between personal information collected, processed and used by service suppliers or posted online by individuals themselves. There's it is difficult to trace the responsibility of related parties and ensure safety for personal information. Now today, June the 14th, is the World Blood Donor Day. To mark this occasion, the top 100 blood donors in 2015 met with Vice State President Nguyen Thị Doan in Hanoi yesterday. At the welcoming ceremony, Zuan said she hopes they will continue to maintain their own good health and urge others to join the charity campaign. For their part, the outstanding donors shared their experiences and encouraged the others to donate blood. Countries worldwide celebrate World Blood Donor Day to raise awareness about the need to donate safe blood and to acknowledge the silent contributions of the blood donors who offer this life-saving gift. Vietnam has organized the event annually since 2007. Currently, most provinces and cities across the country have reported that they now have enough blood in their supplies. The blood is the most precious thing a human being has. In Vietnam, there are blood donors with rare blood types. They represent only 0.1% of the population in Vietnam and are especially in need. In the following report, we will visit some rare blood groups in the country to understand their dedication to saving lives. Although all blood is made of the same basic elements, not all blood is alike while the vast majority of blood types fall into one of the major ABO groups. Only 7 out of 10,000 Vietnamese have rare blood types. A rare blood group consists of an RH factor, usually defined as the absence of one or several antigens. It is extremely dangerous for people with rare blood types when they need blood transfusion. We have to build a group of donors who are ready to donate blood when needed. 
the need for rare blood groups across the country has attracted hundreds of donors. Nguyễn Thị Tường Vi is an active one in Cần Thơ City. I'm a rare blood type. Only few people fall into this group, so one is safe lies in emergency conditions. I'm in good health and I have gained weight normally after donating blood. Rare blood groups do not have regular meetings. They come to local hospitals at the request of health advisors. Although living in different regions, they travel miles to areas in need of blood transfusions. The donors always come when we call them. In 2013, there was a newborn baby in Douglas province with a rare blood type who needed a blood transfusion. A blood donor traveled some 300 miles all the way from Omo district to save the baby. Thank you for saving my life is the message of World Blood Donor Day 2015. Rare blood donors have saved lives through blood donation motivating other blood donors to continue their important voluntary work. Now moving on to economic news, Vietnam's gross domestic product or GDP growth is forecast to reach 6% this year. This figure is gradually increasing to 6.5% in 2017. This was made in the World Bank's Global Economic Prospects Report released on June the 10th. This growth is attributable to the continued strong performance of manufacturing, export and foreign investment. Growth in East Asia and the Pacific is expected to ease to 6.7% this year and remain stable thereafter. This country will mostly benefit from low fuel prices. However, the impact will vary across the nations. This reflects the magnitude of net fuel importers, intensity of energy production, and the share of oil and gas in energy consumption. Meanwhile, growth is now expected to reach 2.8% globally this year. This is lower than the 3% anticipated in January. It is expected to pick up to 3.2% over the next two years. Now, good news for Vietnamese lychee growers. After the U.S. and Australia, Canada is the next market to approve the import of irradiation treated lychees from Vietnam. It comes just in time for Vietnam's 2015 lychee harvest, which has already commenced and will last until the middle of July. Shipments of Vietnamese lychees are permitted to be air freighted to Canada to ensure the best quality. However, the price of the fruit will be raised due to high transportation costs. The Vietnamese government is hoping this will be the first of many tropical fruits it can export, including mangoes and dragon fruit, to the Canadian market. Now, this lychee season has witnessed a growth in consumption from both domestic and international markets. In light of this development, both farmers and enterprises in the country are pushing to build a network to ensure an effective supply chain to consumers. 20 supermarket chains and dozens of wholesale markets nationwide have pledged to buy 65% of the lychee output from the northern province of Haizung this season. The minimal buying price was set at 10,000 Vietnam dong, roughly 50 cents per kilogram. The agreement was made at a recent conference on trade promotion, coordinated by the Hanoi Department of Industry and Trade in Haizung Province. To prepare for our consumption plan this year, we have worked with cooperatives and companies in Haizung. We are scheduled to buy more than 1,000 tons of light cheese. We have reorganized the market space to create extra areas and better conditions for lychee supply trucks to come and sell directly on the market grounds. According to the Ministry of Agriculture, currently the domestic market consumes up to 65% of the total lychee output in the country. Representatives of the event have called for specific branding of lychee origins to ensure benefit for lychee growing localities. This past week, the Ministry of Industry and Trade has created a working group to resolve any issues by building a nationwide network to connect lychee farmers and enterprises in the country. We are looking to enterprises at provincial levels across the nation to further push their connection with farmers of agro-produce. This program begins now with the lychee market. 
This year has witnessed lychee being consumed at prices that are 10 to 20 percent higher than previous years. Economists at the conference say the building of an effective network within the domestic market will ensure sustainable consumption for not only lychees but also other Vietnamese agro produce. Now, 200 Vietnamese enterprises have been participating in the China South Asia Expo and the China Kunming Import and Export Commodities Fair in China's Yunnan province. Of the 200 booths present, Vietnam has the second largest just after India. This shows the focus that Vietnamese enterprises have on Kunming's market. In return, the Chinese city has also been offering support for Vietnamese businesses. More to follow. Bites was one of the first Vietnamese enterprises to arrive on the Chinese market since the 1990s. As of 2014, China has been the company's largest export market, with a year's export growth at 10 percent. Among its provinces, Yunnan is the company's largest market. I have known the footwear brand of BT for years. The product quality is really good. My friends also like the brand a lot. We usually come to exhibitions like this to buy the product. By establishing a distribution channel in China, our company hopes to get more favorable conditions to expand and approach other neighboring countries such as Myanmar, Laos and Thailand. China has been one of the three biggest importers of agriculture, forestry and fishery products from Vietnam. The commute time to Kunming City has been shortened thanks to the newly established Hanoi Lao Cai Highway that connects to Kunming's Heko Highway. This is an opportunity for Vietnamese enterprises to promote their export activities, especially in agriculture and fishery products, to the Chinese market. Yunnan is an inland province in China. As such, the demand for seafood remains high, and that's why we chose China as our target market, especially Yunnan province. We have been preparing a guarantee sector, reservation area and other infrastructures to receive fishery exports from Vietnam. I believe that Vietnam's fishery export turnover will grow significantly this year. The transportation infrastructure and the product itself have been two of the biggest benefits to Vietnamese enterprises in approaching and expanding into Chinese markets like Yunnan province. Through this interview, Vietnamese enterprises will have a better chance to reach the market of 300 million people in the southwest China region and even larger Asian markets in the future. Coming up next on BTV News, Vietnam has recently offered visa exemptions to 16 countries. It has proposed many opportunities for the country's tourism sector. And Vietnamese Canadian bubble artist Phan Yang captivates Vietnamese audiences through a spectacle of bubble art featuring laser lights and music effects. Exotic Vietnam is an intriguing blend of many charms. This land is where all manner of stunning landscapes await like a visual feast, rivaled only by the beauty of its people and their abundantly rich tradition and culture. Here is where you can relive the past in richest color or live it up in the bright lights of the big city. With so much more to offer, Vietnam is simply unforgettable. Welcome back to VTV News. The 24 districts throughout Ho Chi Minh City will carry out a month-long red flamboyant campaign from June the 14th to July the 12th with the participation of approximately 40,000 students, teachers and youth across various localities. Participants will organize and encourage young people to join summer activities, including teaching classes for charity, protecting the environment, learning about traffic laws and various sports and cultural activities. Launched by Ho Chi Minh City Youth Union Committee, the Red Flamboyant Campaign is a volunteer initiative of high schoolers whose goal is to work for the good of the community and educate children on their responsibilities in society. <laughs> 
Now, the two-day Vietnam Festival 2015 began on Saturday in Japan's capital city of Tokyo. As the highlight of Vietnam Week in Japan, the festival has attracted millions of visitors to come and share in the fun. Our VTV reporters were there in Tokyo for the event. The opening ceremony of the Vietnam Festival in Japan was attended by many Japanese leaders and parliamentarians. They expressed their happiness at the widespread of Vietnamese culture in Japan. I can feel the excitement of festival goers today. Through activities like this, we can see that cooperation in economy, culture and sports are important factors to strengthen Vietnam-Japan relations. The Vietnam Festival showcased the country's special cultural traits, including water puppets, folk paintings and cuisine. Many types of Vietnamese food have been introduced and enjoyed by Japanese customers, including pho or noodle soup and bánh xèo or crispy pancake. The Vietnam Festival in Japan is an indispensable part of Vietnam-Japan exchange. This is a good chance for Vietnam to present the country's culture and people to the Japanese and promote mutual understanding between the two countries. It is estimated that 130,000 people will visit the Vietnam Festival 2015 in Japan. The festival is expected to promote investment and tourism activities between Vietnam and Japan. Now, so far this year, the tourism industry in Vietnam has reported a 7% rise in foreign visitors compared to the same period last year. This has been due to the recent visa exemptions Vietnam has extended to 16 countries. The visa exemptions have proposed many opportunities for Vietnamese tourism. However, concerns remain, including visa fees and procedures. More to follow. Vietnam visa information and requirements are published. However, many tourists still need support from travel agencies. Many find it complicated, while others worry about the fee. It's not too bad, but Vietnam is quite expensive compared to the others. There was one time when I came to Thailand and I wanted to come to Vietnam the next week, but I didn't have a visa. So I couldn't come to Vietnam because I, did, I didn't know how to get a visa. According to a travel agency, tourists tend to choose visa-free countries or countries with simple visa procedures. The current visa procedure in Vietnam is quite complicated for many tourists. Many tourists complain that it's not just the 45 US dollars visa fee. There are extra fees as well as other processes. Some business owners said if Vietnam exempts visas or reduces visa fees and simplifies procedures, more tourists will come to the country. If we make it easier for tourists to get a visa, our business will run better. If more tourists come, more Vietnamese products will be sold. I think it's good. Currently, Vietnam offers visa exemptions for 16 countries. The number is not many compared to Thailand with 61 visa exemptions and more than 150 exemptions in Malaysia, Singapore and the Philippines. Competition between countries is very strong. A destination that requires only a plane ticket and no visa definitely has many advantages compared to those with more requirements. Accordingly, Vietnam is moving forward to offer visa exemptions for countries like Germany, Australia, United States and France. As such, tourism in Vietnam will be able to develop even more. Now the second annual ASEAN Pride Music Festival 2015 Celebrating Family will take place next weekend in Hanoi on June the 20th. Artists from the United States and around the region will take to the stage in Hanoi to raise awareness about the importance of family. With crafts, food and drink booths and a special tent presenting President Obama's Young Southeast Asian Leaders Initiative, ASEAN Pride 2015 will showcase the diversity of American and Southeast Asian musicians. 
2015 marks the 20th anniversary of the normalization of relations between the United States and Vietnam. Over 4,000 joined the first ASEAN Pride in 2014. This year's event expects to draw the participation of many more people in the capital city. Now, Fan Yang, the world-renowned verbal artist, is dazzling thousands of audiences with his verbal performances in Guangning, Northern Province, this summer. A spectacle of verbal art featuring laser lights and music effects, Fan Yang's show has become a stable attraction. Let's take a look. The bubble show entitled Legendary Hat Long is a highlight for visitors in Guangning province this summer. Duped as the bubble wizard, Fan Yang dazzles audiences in Hat Long Bay with a combination of bubble and media art. I really like it because there are so many bubbles. This is the first time I have seen such huge bubbles. Among the entertainment offers here, the bubble show appeals to both young children and adults. The 45-minute show tells audiences about the legends and folklore surrounding Hat Long Bay. The natural landscapes of Hat Long are featured on the stage through the combination of giant bubbles and laser lights. Van Yang is a Vietnamese-Canadian bubble artist who holds 19 Guinness World Records. In this tour in Vietnam, he plans to break another bubble record. And in the remaining time of our news bullets in this hour, let's check the news making headlines over the past week. On Monday, the National Assembly passed the adjustment to the Law and Ordinance Legislative Plan for the 13th National Assembly in 2015 and 2016. Later on this week, four ministers, including the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, the Minister of Industry and Trade, the Minister of Education and Training, and the Minister of Science and Technology, took the floor during the National Assembly Q&A sessions. On Saturday, the Q&A sessions concluded with questions for Deputy Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc. All in law, deputies said that the Q&A sessions were held in a frank, open and constructive manner and would help policymakers seek practical measures for Vietnam's development. Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dung on Friday met with the Deputy Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, Michihiro Furusawa in Hanoi. He highlighted that Vietnam's goal is sustainable economic development, ensuring a stable macroeconomy in the context of globalization and integration. Vietnam looks to maintaining social welfare, reducing poverty and improving the livelihood of its citizens, the state leader said. For his part, Furusawa congratulated Vietnam on its socio-economic progress, including fulfilling the United Nations Millennium Development Goals ahead of schedule. Furusawa noted that the IMF is always ready to support Vietnam in policy consultation, technical assistance and improving human resources. The Midterm Vietnam Business Forum, or VBF, took place on Tuesday in Hanoi. At the event, representatives of several chambers of commerce pointed out the positive results of implementing Resolution 19 in improving the business environment regarding trade, tourism and investment. Head of this working group provided feedback on the amended investment and enterprises law, the circular on import of used equipment and some other issues. Meanwhile, the banking group made some key concerns for the sectors regarding forex governance and general banking licenses. Suggestions to promote infrastructure through the PPP model was also under discussion among delegates. The third China-South Asia Expo and the 23rd Kunming Import and Export Fair 
officially kicked off on June 12 in Kunming, Yunnan Province, China. Speaking at the opening ceremony, Deputy Prime Minister Huang Chunghai emphasized the role of the Expo in promoting regional trade and investment cooperation. This year, the China South Asia Expo attracted more than 3,000 enterprises from 31 South Asian and ASEAN countries. Vietnamese representatives are expected to showcase farm produce, footwear and wood products at 144 pavilions. A host of seminars and forums will be held during the event, which runs through June 16th. While there has yet to be a case of the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, or MERS, reported in Vietnam, the country's Ministry of Health is taking serious precautions to lower risk of the disease coming to Vietnam. On Monday, the Ministry of Health hosted a teleconference to monitor potential outbreaks of the MERS infection in provinces and cities throughout the country. Two hospitals of National Hospital of Tropical Diseases and Northern Thang Long General Hospital in Hanoi are tasked with any cases related to MERS. At Tân Sơn Nhất International Airport in Ho Chi Minh City, four body temperature scanners were set up to check body temperature on any passengers from the affected regions, including South Korea and the Middle East. The seventh European Vietnamese documentary film festival kicked off on Wednesday in Hanoi. Audiences in the capital and Ho Chi Minh City are being treated to free screenings of European and Vietnamese documentaries over a 10-day program. Films from eight European countries and Israel are joining Vietnamese productions. Together, they delve into topical social themes. Within the festival's framework, young Southeast Asian filmmakers will also showcase their works at a special screening, while German and Israeli directors are offering filmmaking workshops. And now it's time to check out our latest updates on weather scenes. And that's it for the newscast. I am Dai Chiang from Hanoi. For more information and updates, please log on to vtv4.vn or youtube.com slash vtv4go. Once again, thank you very much for tuning in and goodbye for now from Hanoi.